Hi, I'm Heidi Perryman, and I'm sorry I'm not there in person, brave enough to face the weather, but I thought I would give you a chance to hear this talk anyway. Um, I want to talk about Martinez and the difference we saw in our creek, our community, and our wildlife when some beavers moved in in 2007. Now, Martinez is in Northern California. It's northeast of San Francisco, and it's the hometown of John Muir. The beavers that moved in, they moved into Alhambra Creek, which flows right through the center of town and is both tidal and fresh. At the time they moved in, we had just a dad beaver, shown here, and a mom beaver, and they built a dam and a lodge. Now, the city was concerned because Martinez is very low-lying, has lots of problems with flooding anyway, and they thought the beavers would make it worse. Pretty quickly, they got a permit to depredate or trap these beavers. But as you can see, these happen to be fairly easy to see beavers. So all the children on the way to school, all the lawyers on the way to the courtroom, all the businessmen on their way to work, um, they could all see these beavers. And in fact, uh, they got pretty engaged with them. It wasn't uncommon to see families with children gathered at the dam in the evenings and mom beaver was pregnant at that time. That's a picture of a pregnant beaver in case you never saw one. She gave birth to four of these, which were also adorable, also visible in the center of town. In fact, in those days, you could sit at Starbucks, have your morning latte, and you could watch them play. You could even hear them. And it was a sound that got me really excited. Um, I thought maybe if the media started to pay attention, then the city council would slow down their decision. So in, at one point, we were in all the local papers, we were in the state papers, and we were even on national news. Uh, it really made the city council realize that everybody was watching them. There was a huge meeting to discuss the fate of the beavers, and some 200 people showed up from that meeting. They came from uptown, downtown, and out of town, and they said, pretty clearly, we do not want you to kill these beavers or move them away. We want you to figure out how to solve this problem, and we want them to stay right here. Um, faced with massive public outcry, the city did what cities often do and appoint a subcommittee to study the issue further, which I got to be on. Now, at that big meeting, there was also a documentary filmmaker who wanted to cover the story for a film he was working on on urban wildlife. Ultimately, this wasn't made, but I thought I'd share it with you anyway. We first saw evidence of beaver when we noticed a fallen tree in Alhambra Creek and then all of a sudden a dam was being constructed. We contacted the Fish and Game Department and they said, well basically you've got two choices. One choice is to do nothing, let nature take its course and more than likely flood in our downtown. Or two, you can take the dam out and euthanize the beavers. I learned a long time ago in politics, there's two things you don't mess around with, children's programs and seniors programs. And now I've added a third to that list, and that third is animals and little furry ones, you know, at that. We're building what's generally called a flow device, mm -hmm. and it's the, the purpose of a flow device in a beaver dam is to control the vertical growth of the dam. The slow, guys. We're, we're basically sneaking water away from them. The beavers are in the process of, of uh, recovering from the fur trade. So places like this are, are ancient beaver habitat that the beavers, after several hundred years, because of their extirpation during the fur trade, are finally returning to. But it immediately becomes very controversial because of the, you know, the fears associated with flooding.
people are um, very anxious about the first storm. But I went back and looked at the flood data, and any time we have more than half an inch of rain over a 24-hour period, you will have a dam washout. So the dam's not going to be an issue. It's going to be gone. This makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. I think in other communities, you would have seen the beavers removed very, very quickly. But here in Martinez, beavers did what they did, and now the beavers have been elevated to celebrity status. Well, I agree with them. The beavers were celebrities in Martinez, and it allowed us to hire Skip Lyle, who came in and installed his design of the caster master at the, at the dam. And since this was installed in the very first days of 2008, nobody has worried about flooding in Martinez from the beavers. This entirely solved our problem and uh, for nearly a decade. The beavers were very good sports. Even though Skip took the dam down by a bit, they decided to stick around, and they built a series of secondary dams to adapt to the changes. A uh, secondary dam, at one point we had five. At, currently we have none. It's a work in progress. Um, the beavers also built near bridges where people could still watch them, which was very nice of them, I think. Our beavers ate cottonwood, they eat willow, they eat cattails, they eat tulies, they eat fennel, they eat blackberries, they eat duckweed. The trees that we wanted to protect, we could wrap with wire. But it's also important to remember that beaver-chewed trees are going to coppice even in cities if you can persuade public works to leave their roots in the ground. Um, we also painted some trees with sand, and what you're doing is choosing a latex paint that matches the color of the bark and adding mace and sand to the mix. The gritty texture of beavers don't like, and they won't chew, but it has to be repeated every two years or so. Our beavers let us see a lot of their lives. Here are two kits engaged in mutual grooming, which you can see feels fantastic. Um, both parents, you know, raise the kids. Parents are great role models. Here is footage of dad carrying two kits on his back, teaching him how to swim. And here is mom coming to check on two slightly older kids just to see how they're doing. Now, the first time we... Um, had a whole family working together on the dam. Here's mom and dad with Junior uh, building the dam. When we first had kids and yearlings, we were anxious how they'd get along. Would there be competition or sibling rivalry? But it turns out that yearlings are like really fun uncles. They give you treats. They bring you rides on their back. And uh, this is how they earn their keep with the family. Uh, yearlings do a lot of work, and they're easy to observe also. One of the first things people say when they see our beavers is, oh, my God, they're so big. But it's important to remember that beavers have really big jobs. They move a ton of trees, earth, and they really use that body weight to their advantage. It's also true that in places where beaver, it doesn't freeze, beavers don't have to live off a of food cache, and they do get heavier, but it's not uncommon for our adults to weigh out at 60 or 65 pounds. We all forgot how big beavers are because we only see yearlings stuffed in museums, and those are the silly ones that get caught in the first place. Our beavers built a bank lodge, and I'm going to show you footage of Mom Beaver working on that lodge. And she does that by carrying mud and sticks above her paws and under her chin. And she'll repeat this over and over again till it has the level of insulation she thinks her family needs. Now, I call this Mom Beaver, but how the heck would I know? Beavers are monomorphs. They have no external sex characteristics except for when the female's breastfeeding, when she has visible teats. And when mom had visible teats, we were able to notice that she happened to have a distinctive marking in her tail. And that was important to us because that meant 
Every time we looked at that tail, we knew it was Mom. And that was really how the community followed the story and the cast of characters. Now, Mom came to us at the end of 2006, but she died in 2010. She actually broke a tooth and sustained a lot of infections through that break. At the time that Mom died, she had just had three kids. They were about eight weeks old, and we wondered if they'd be okay without her. Um, you can see this footage. This kit is so happy she comes over when he's sick, when she's sick, that he lifts up his tail in anticipation like a dog. I love that footage. Um, Dad turned out to be a really wonderful parent. All those kids grew to maturity, and a two-year-old that had actually dispersed came back and helped with the family. I don't know how he knew it. Somehow he got the memo. Uh, so uh, those three kids stayed with us uh, the usual time and uh, did fine. This is our dad, Beaver. You can see he's kind of an older, grizzled beaver. Sometimes we call him the Marlboro Beaver because he looks like he's been on the ranch for a few seasons. I see the little kit pop up. Uh, we thought when Mom died we'd never have kits again in Alhambra Creek, and we were pretty sad about that. But Dad took off for a month or so and came back with a new beaver we didn't recognize, and then we saw this behavior. This is what I call the caution float. It's a beaver sitting very still, listening, looking, smelling for danger, and we always see this before the kits emerge for the first time. Uh, and after we saw this for a while, then we saw this. Dad came back with a beaver we didn't recognize, and it turned out he got remarried. So they had one beaver in 2012, three beavers the year after. All told, in Alhambra Creek, we've had 24 kids born since I've been paying attention. We've changed the population of beavers all over the Bay Area, and then we've also been able to see and photograph some really amazing behaviors. We're able to see things like a lot of varietal feeding. Here's a beaver mowing the lawn for us. And the fact that kids, when they're just learning to eat leaves, will roll them up like cigars to stick them in their mouth because it's easier. I started the organization Worth a Dam to take care of the Martinez beavers, but then I wanted to teach other cities how and why to live with this important animal. The very first beaver festival we ever had, to be honest, was just because the city hadn't made a decision yet, and we thought the beavers would be harder to kill after we threw a party for them. But they turned out to be so much fun that we've had them every year. This year will be our 10th, and you're all invited. We have wildlife groups from all over Northern California. We have beaver tours. We have children's activities, um, and we have live music. It's a really fun day. One of the very first activities we did was have kids draw on ceramic tiles, and we were able to fire those tiles and have them installed on the bridge where the people live, where the beavers live, sorry. Uh, I find that involving kids is a great way to involve parents and to really get the attention of the media, which helps us continue to press the city to do the right thing. Our community has been very active and engaged. This gentleman last year did a beaver bicycle that he drove around the festival just to promote it. It was a lot of fun. One of the activities that Worth the Dam does at the festival is the Keystone Species Charm Bracelet, where kids earn charms or badges or buttons by learning how beavers help other species, and then they're able to put them all together and take them with them. We get paid for, we get a grant for this from the Fish and Wildlife Commission. I try to teach how beavers build the neighborhood, and then everyone moves in which is basically a child adaption of the keystone species concept. Um, we've definitely seen this play out firsthand, even in an urban creek that is full of concrete and riprap and trash. 
um, the dams trapping sediment and organic material, and obviously that's getting broken down all the time by tiny bugs. But the beavers are also moving and removing mud. They're scraping it up the pond floor, and they're dumping it on the dam or lodge. And what we know over time is that this constant excavation produces a pond floor that has several different elevations, kind of like the surface of the moon, kind of pockmarked. And the research of Glennis Hood and others teaches us that this creates habitat for different invertebrates because of these changes of elevation. Um, so we end up with a bug bloom at a beaver pond, and everything that eats those bugs and everything that comes to eat the things that eat those bugs does better at a beaver pond. And that's true even in an urban pond in a scrubby urban creek. We've been able to see over time uh, that our cast of characters at the creek are changing because of that. So uh, whether we get a picture like this green heron eating a tulip perch or the green heron eating a Sacramento split tail, which actually is an endangered fish, um, I like this footage especially because you can see the water so thick with fish that when the beaver pushes up to work on the dam, he actually gets one on his eye. Because that's the kind of changes that happen in the creek when beavers are allowed to stay. More transformed fish mean more fish eaters, and we're able to see that as well. We never had green heron in Alhambra Creek before. Now they're all, all in residence and breeding in the area. Our pond turtle went, population went way up. Our visits from waterfowl, kingfisher, um, went way up. We have been really excited about these changes. We never had night heron at that level of the creek before. And this guy came in. I happen to love this footage because you can see he's teaching us a valuable life lesson. He's leaving his mouth open, waiting for something good to come along. And while he's waiting for something better, something in his crop makes a break for it. So appreciate what you have. I feel that's a lesson. We were surprised to see this guy. This is a hooded merganser. Uh, we had never had a hooded merganser in the creek before. They're voracious fish eaters, so they aren't there for the view. He came in his play clothes to check it out and then came back in his fancy clothes. So we have these ducks every winter in downtown Martinez, a few blocks from Main Street. Uh, beavers have really changed our habitat. Even our uh, mallards produce better clutches and better surviving clutches because of the beaver ponds. I love that footage of the beaver swimming up and saying, yeah, thank me for this pond. I did this myself. It's great. Kids come down. They can see the baby ducks or they can see the muskrat. Our muskrat population went way up when the beavers came. Obviously, muskrats enjoy the habitat the beavers create. Our visits from river otters um, came way up when the beavers came. Uh, river otters are carnivores. They're there to eat the fish, that are there to eat the bugs, that are there because of the beaver ponds. Um, and we love to see uh, otters show up, uh, especially the young otters. They like to use the pipe of Skip's Caster Master as a kind of water slide. So they will actually go through that pipe like a tunnel. They'll go boom, 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 boom through the pipe. They'll come up over the dam, and they'll come out and fish in his head inside the filter. And the reason they do that is because the beavers can not get in, but the fish still can. Beavers and otters do not love each other, and otters will take kids if they can get them. We see a ton of tail slapping when otters come around. People were pretty surprised when we saw this little face. This is a mink. We hadn't seen mink in Alhambra Creek for 25 years. The mink came in with his mother and siblings, and at that time we were noticing, my goodness, we're not seeing very many muskrat. But it turns out that mink's favorite food is muskrat. So the mink is there for the muskrat, the muskrat's there for the habitat, and it's all there because of the beavers. 
Now, you might say to yourself, well, sure, that's true in Martinez, but would this be true in some other town? So I thought I would show you some pictures my friend Rusty is taking in Napa, the wine country. This is right off the Napa River. It is between a hotel and a car dealership. He's really seeing very similar changes to the wildlife, to the creek in the community of Napa. Uh, pond turtle, kingfisher, green heron, uh, night heron, uh, and these changes are really mirroring what we saw in Martinez. And he was very surprised. In fact, when my friend Rusty uh, sent me this picture, I said, wait a minute, I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm going to predict that the next new species you send me and that you photograph is going to be a hooded merganser. And a few weeks later, he sent me this picture. So it's not just Martinez. It's not just Napa. It could be other cities. It could be your city. Um, think of our different, our creeks and our watershed and our wildlife would look if we were coexisting with beavers and cooperating now, back when the beavers came to Martinez, people behaved as if urban beavers were very unusual, but that's not true. Um, urban streams have very low gradients that beavers love, and beaver issues occurred in 38 states last year. In fact, I am, was invited to co-author a chapter on urban beavers for the uh, upcoming revision of Pollock's guidebook, and I'm pretty happy about that because we should all be thinking about that. We wanted more cities to be talking about coexisting, and so we were especially happy to be approached by this photographer. This is Susie Esterhaus. She's an internationally acclaimed photographer, and she also works for Ranger Rick magazine. Um, and she is particularly famous for pictures of animals with their children. Uh, she wanted to cover the Martinez beavers uh, when the kids were born in 2015. And she was going to come photograph them every day. She got them accustomed to her shutter sound, and she began to identify certain family members by sight. We were really excited because this was going to be an aid pledge page spread in Ranger Rick, and it was really going to emphasize coexistence and why and how to live with beavers in an urban setting. It was the best of times, but it was also the worst of times. One of our kids, a month later, died of unexplained causes. A second one wandered sick into the park and was taken to the wildlife hospital where he was euthanized. A third one died, and the fourth one disappeared. We were able to take all those uh, kits for necropsy at UC Davis, and Fish and Game was so concerned about this unexplained mortality event that they actually stepped in and did a lot of extra testing and tested the water as well. Ultimately, we were able to rule out all kinds of diseases and toxins, but we weren't able to determine a cause. Um, there was no explanation forthcoming for why those kids died. And in fact, a month later, our yearling also died, and there was no explanation for his death either. Mom and Dad, looking at their decimated family structure, decided to head downstream, and they uh, disappeared. By the end of October, we had no beavers left in Martinez at all. After everything we'd done to keep them safe, we couldn't protect them from this. Remember, it was the fourth year of very sustained drought in California, and conditions were pretty uh, miserable. Even without the beavers to maintain the creek, uh, the ponds dried up, the wildlife stopped coming, and Martinez was a ghost town. We were um, also emotionally lost without a center. It made me want to talk with this gentleman, uh, Mario Alfaro, who had done a series of murals downtown uh, already, 
I wanted to think about doing a mural on the cement surface of the bridge near where the beavers lived. Um, I wanted uh, the idea of a beaver dam to stretch all the way across that creek forever and uh, really to acknowledge using Cheryl's photographs and um, the the wildlife response and also the community response. Um, I wanted this to be a sort of living testament to the impact the beavers had in Martinez. And the city eventually agreed. Um, it took a little bit of persuading. So by the end of April in 2016, we had a mural across the bridge, and we were pretty happy about this. Um, it's a nice, uh, vivid reminder all the time when people come to the creek. We also made sure that the kids would be represented in that mural and that their their little lives would be recalled as well. Now, at the time that Mario was finishing this mural, uh, and we were kind of thinking of it as a memorial, we started to see something uh, strange happening downstream. This was about 10 blocks from where the beavers had been living, uh, and it was a very small, scruffy thing at first. We thought maybe a kid was playing around or somebody was nostalgic for the beavers that we didn't know about. But it started to get more and more respectable, and then it started to look like a beaver dam. Uh, the gentleman who'd been filming the beavers at night went down to capture what he could, and he actually saw this. So we had not just one beaver in the Humber Creek. We had two, and the larger one was the same female as before. We could recognize certain behaviors and traits. So um, somehow she seemed to have hooked up with a new partner, our father, the old primary father, had been um, between 12 and 15 years old, so maybe he didn't make it um, or the, anyway. But uh, he actually got footage of them mating, and the city, um, independent from this, the city was working on building a, a, a bridge downstream, and they started um, using a pile driver the grinding of the pile driver was not attractive to the beavers, and they decided to move upstream. So they actually follow that. You see the line of trees along there. That's our creek going more and more and more into town, um, surrounded by houses, surrounded by concrete, very in size. A really bad place for them to be, but they did not consult me and ask my advice. So um, the beavers moved up there, and um, we've heard from somebody that they're in the area, and uh, actually the person who who watches them from her deck said, it's so lovely seeing them with that muskrat every day. The muskrat just loves hanging out with them, follows them wherever they go. Well, obviously that's not a muskrat. So we've had now 25 kids in Alhambra Creek, and... Um, I suppose with the high rains, uh, they have lots of options. Hopefully, they'll come downstream soon. Um, sometimes I wonder, you know, is this the end of the story? But um, I don't think beaver stories have ends. I think they have chapters, and our chapter has been a heck of a read. Um, we won the Environmental Education Award this year from the John Muir Conservation Association, and we also were actually entered into the congressional record for the Beaver Festival and the Martinez Beavers. Um, why should anyone live with beavers in the city? Well, there's a huge ecological benefit. If you take nothing else from this talk, I hope you remember that. There's a great opportunity for wildlife viewing and a great opportunity for tourism but also for education. You know, beavers aren't just a keystone species. They're also a charismatic species, and people love to learn about them. This year there was an article published about the importance of 
the habitat of freshwater wetlands and how we don't have any kind of uh, flagship umbrella species to represent them. But I've got an idea of a pretty ideal candidate for this freshwater panda. So, um, and I think you do too. Worth a Dam maintains a beaver website that is updated daily. It's a great way to learn about what's happening in the beaver world or to promote what you're working on in the beaver world. Contact us and we'll put it out there. Our beavers were very generous with their lives. They really encouraged a lot of fantastic photography, not just Susie. But um, the nighttime footage was taken by Moses Silva, who's just a a pipe fitter in town who got interested in beavers because they're cool. Uh, The daytime stills by Cheryl Reynolds and the daytime video by myself. This year, there was a wonderful article written by Alex Riley about reintroducing beavers into the UK. And one of the things he said really stuck with me. He wrote, the beaver isn't just an animal, it's an ecosystem. And that turns out to be true even in an urban setting. Uh, We in Martinez know that beavers are worth a damn. I'm very sorry I wasn't here in person, and I'm sorry I don't get to hear every single one of you, but if anyone has questions, please just send them to me through the website, and I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you. Bye-bye.